Welcome. In this video, we're going to continue our exploration of quadratics, this time by looking at non-real solutions to quadratic equations. So let's start by solving this given equation, x squared plus 4x plus 5 equals 0, using the quadratic formula. So in this case, a equals 1, b equals 4, c equals 5. So we end up with x equals negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 5. And this entire quantity divided by 2 times 1. This simplifies to negative 4 plus or minus. And then inside our radical, we end up with negative 4 and divide all of this by 2. So the question is, what two numbers multiply to negative 4? Actually, not even what two numbers. What number multiplied by itself gives you negative 4? Well, no real number has this property. And we can see this by trying 2 times 2. That gives us positive 4. Negative 2 times negative 2 gives us positive 4. And then we can't do negative 2 times positive 2 since these numbers are not the same. They are different numbers, so this does not work. Okay, why don't we look at a graph then for part b? Because clearly I need to find a solution to this, and the quadratic formula for some reason isn't working. We'll get to that reason why, by the way, the quadratic formula will work, but in this case it's not going to work, and we'll explain the cases it doesn't work in. So let's use technology. Okay, as you can see, I have GeoGebra up, and now I'm going to graph f of x again. So I type in f and then parentheses x equals x squared plus 4x plus 5 and then hit return. And now I get a picture of what's going on, a better picture of what's going on. Where does this orange graph intersect the x-axis? Well, if you notice, it doesn't. This orange graph is actually above the x-axis. So there are no x-intercepts. Well, what can we do to solve this? Let's hide the graph and figure this out. There are no x-intercepts. And if we remember, we kind of had a graph that looked a bit like this. That was above the x-axis without x-intercepts. So let's continue. We had x equals, and bear with me while I resize my page. We had x equals negative 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 divided by 2. In order to solve this, we need to define something new. We need to define the square root of negative 1 as i. That tells me that if I square both of these sides, so if I go ahead and square both sides, I end up with negative 1 equals i squared. So suddenly I have a number, and this number is i, that when I square it, I get a negative 1. So if I have 2i, and I square that, I end up with 2 squared times i squared, which is 4 times negative 1, and that's negative 4. So this number multiplied by itself, that is 2i gives us negative 4. And this is not a real number. This is called a complex number. 2i. Complex numbers in general are of this form a plus bi. a is the real part of the complex number. b is the imaginary part of the complex number. With that, let's keep going. I've shown here that the square root of negative 4 is 2i, and that's because 2i, whole quantity squared, is negative 4. So I can replace this with a 2i. Now I have two answers. x equals negative 4 plus 2i over 2, 
and x equals negative 4 minus 2i over 2. And I'm going to move this page up a little more just to give me more space to work with this. So on the left here, I have negative 4 over 2 plus 2i over 2, and that is negative 2 plus i. And you may be wondering why I went to this extra step. And let me show you something that I see often done, so don't do this. I often will see students write, start here, correct, and then they just want to cross out things that match. I'll see students cross out those twos and then write negative 4 plus i. But as we can see here, it's actually negative 2 plus i, not negative 4 plus i. Also be warned, it's not. It's not okay to cross this out and just leave a 2 and then write this as negative 2 plus 2i. As you can see, we need negative 2 plus i because this number splits up into two fractions, negative 4 halves and 2i over 2. These are my two fractions. So don't do this. Your work will always be wrong if you do this. Don't do that. Okay, let's keep going. Let's find the other solution. This is x equals negative 4 over 2 minus 2i over 2, which is negative 2 minus i. So my intercepts or my solutions are x equals negative 2 plus i and negative 2. Oops, let me write my x. x equals negative 2 minus i. We can also write this as x equals negative 2 plus or minus i. And this solution or this solution are acceptable. Either one. But please choose one or the other. Otherwise, I might think that you don't understand the difference between why this is not one complete solution. It's this or this. Let's continue. Let's use technology to find the vertex of f of x, and that's the same f of x from the previous um, problem, since it's already graphed here anyways. And let's double check x squared plus 4x plus 5. And the vertex, if we tap, will just show up at the bottom. And the vertex is negative 2, 1. Now, in the previous activity, we saw that you can also find the vertex, at least the x value of the vertex, by averaging the x values of the two x intercepts. That's how we came up with this formula. If you remember, x equals negative b over 2a. I didn't walk you through the proof of this, but I had it written down on the page so you could see that in the video by going back to the previous activity. So let's try that. Let's find the average of 2 plus i. It actually was negative 2 plus i and negative 2 minus i. So negative 2 plus i plus negative 2 minus i, and this whole quantity divided by 2. The parentheses are not needed, but are there just to show you that this is one quantity and this is another. But, but again, those parentheses are not needed. Now I'm going to combine like terms, negative 2 minus 2 plus i minus i divided by 2. Um, i minus i equals 0, so these go away and I end up with negative 4 over 2 or negative 2. And this is the same x value here. To find the y value, evaluate f at negative 2 and you'll notice this comes out to be negative 1 as well. So we end up with the same vertex, negative 2 comma 1, by first finding the average of the two solutions evaluating that average in our function and writing that out as an ordered pair. This is the same vertex we got from technology. I hope this video was helpful.